Yes. Okay, right. So uh, this is question nine from summer 2016, court two. A curve has equation y equals sine ax, where a is a positive constant and x is in radians. State the period of y equals sine ax, giving your answer in an exact form in terms of a. Um, well, this is a transformation to graphs question. When we talked about the trig graphs, when we did transformations of graphs, we probably looked at them in Desmos at some point. So that's the, the sine ax. That means it has that many... But it means it has that many wiggles, doesn't it, in, in the same space. Do you remember that when we do, we do a, a quick kind of sketch of a couple of things here. If we do, uh, there's, there's the graph of sine x, that's 2 pi, and that's, that's the period of sine x. So it, it does that, doesn't it? If we do sine 2x, remember, then sine 2x does two lots of sine wiggles in the same space. So that's 2 pi, and that is pi. So its period is now pi. Does that make sense? Do we see what happens with that? So as a, if a increases, then that period is going to half, isn't it? Um, as, a, as a doubles, the period halves. So it's got something to do with 1 over a, as we're doing with this. And the, the period of that is 2 pi. So the period of that one, if that's sine 2x, I maybe wouldn't have written all of this in the exam, but that's sine x, that's sine 2x, and the period is 2 pi over 2, oh, there we go, which means that has a period of pi. Do, do we see where we're going with this? So the period of sine ax, that is 2 pi over a. And that would be the, the period of the graph. Now, I'm not sure how much we talked about. I'm, I'm sure we did. We have talked about the period of the graph. We've not gone into too much detail about it. It's not something, if you look through the past papers, that has come up very often. But there we are. So, a, a little graph uh, was helpful to start with. 2 pi over a is the answer for that one. Given that x equals a fifth of pi, and x equals 2 pi over pi, are two, the two smallest positive solutions of sine ax equals k, where k is a positive constant, find the values of a and k. My immediate reaction to this question was I want to see what this looks like as a graph so I can work out what's going on. Here we have a sine curve, and the two smallest positive solutions are a fifth of pi and two fifths of pi. Now, if k is a, is a positive constant, k is up here somewhere, <coughs> if we think about where the graph meets the point y equals k, it meets it at two points there. That's what always happens with the sine graph, isn't it? And those two points, we're told, are pi by 5 and 2 pi by 5. Now, because of the symmetry and the curve here, that means that that distance there is the same as that distance there. That's true, isn't it? That must be true because it's symmetrical around that little bit there. So if that distance is pi by 5, so is that distance. So this point here, we're now getting that that point there must be 3 pi by 5. Are we happy with that? Because if that's pi by 5 and that's pi by 5, that's 3 pi by 5. That point there is half the distance of the whole thing. So this point here, our next conclusion, is that that point there is 6 pi by 5. Because it does that wiggle and then it does that wiggle. Now I've just done this by uh, kind of writing it onto the graph. But what I've got there is that 2 pi over a is equal to 6 pi over 5. Do you see, do you see how we've worked that out? Are we, are we happy with the, the logic that takes us to that point? Um, and so if we rearrange this, we're trying to find a, aren't we? 
uh, we can cancel pi out of both sides of this little expression here uh, and take the reciprocal of both sides. So a over 2 is 5 sixths. So a must be 10 sixths if I multiply both sides by 2, which is 5 over 3, isn't it? So a is 5 over 3 in order to have produced that. And now we're just solving a little trigonometric equation because now we're saying that uh, the sine of ax, so 5 thirds of x, is equal to k. That's, that's what we're doing for this bit. Um, 5 thirds of pi over 5 is the sine of pi over 3. And on our calculator, sine pi by 3 is root 3 over 2. That's sine pi by 3 is 60, isn't it? And sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. So k is root 3 over 2. Having got that, this bit dropped out quite easily. I can't remember how many marks they were giving for that. They were giving, the whole thing was only three marks for that little bit. So they were giving one mark for this attempt to use symmetry to come up with some kind of expression here. The second mark was for getting a equals 5 thirds. And the third mark was for getting root 3 over 2 for your value of k. Right. Now, this, this is one of the things about this. What, what I found as I was marking these for you is that um, part one... You saw, you saw the word period in an exact form in terms of it. You saw that expression and thought, oh, I can't do that, and, and maybe wrote a guess down. Part two, you thought, oh, well, that depends on what you did in part one, so you gave up on that. At that point, the exam was nearly over. You'd just given up on parts one and two of question nine, so you didn't, you didn't really consider part three worth looking at and walked away from it. But actually, I think part three is a place to pick up some marks. Given instead, so ignore what we just found out, given instead that sine ax is root three cos ax, find the two smallest positive solutions for x. Give me your answers in exact form in terms of a. Now, even if we're not confident, we can see all the way through that question. Let's try and do some stuff with it. Part three says sine ax is root 3 cos ax. I really, really think it's important that you get used to, to doing this kind of thing, that recovering from tough parts of questions and picking it back up and getting marks where there are marks to be gained is such an important thing. We've done the kind of equation where sine of something equals cos of something. We've done that loads. It's one of the trig identity things. The way of dealing with it, you know, the, the ones where you have more than one function in your equation, it's either the sine squared plus cos squared is 1, or it's the sine over cos equals 10. If we divide both sides by cos ax, we get sine ax over cos ax is root 3, so tan ax is root 3. We're going to do that. That's could all have done that. If tan of something is root 3, our next step is to do inverse tan on the calculator. For that, we do inverse tan of root 3. Thanks for the blow of the calculator, Dan. Inverse tan of root 3, of course, gives us syntax error because I've typed the thing wrong. Um, pi by 3. So ax is equal to pi over 3. Um, did, well, we're doing, we're doing trick stuff at this point. We go to our cat's diagram, don't we? Uh, we say this was tan. It was a positive tan. They gave us uh, pi by 3, so that's in there. Oh, I've not drawn that very well. Pi by 3 is bigger than that, isn't it? So we've got pi by 3, and so we've also got 1, hang on, 1, 2, 3, 4 pi by 3 as our two values of ax. So x is pi over 3a and 4 pi over 3a. Once we divide by the a at the end of it, 
that there was there wasn't any kind of mystery about the A being in there. You just had to you just had to leave it in your hands. And that was that the right the final answer. And we happy with that. Um, yes, then now pi over three A, four pi over three. That I think stands alone independently of the rest of the question as four marks that is not a difficult four marks. You know, that's, it's just, it's got the letter A in there, but that's not a big deal. Really, that's the four marks, that's the four marks that, that we should have got from that question. That's a bit more difficult and a bit more out of the ordinary. But, um, so there's an important lesson, isn't there, to, to not give up on a question just because the start of it seems hard and mysterious. And that's maths. <laughs>